All right, so let's go into this. So I wanted to talk about today, we, we always talk about what are the top producers doing to generate business? We hear what the top producers are doing. We, we hear the masterminds. We hear all these different things. Neil goes over all the time. What are the sources that the top producers are doing? We, we, we hear these things all the time. <clears throat> and a lot of times it always comes down to the basic things. You know, well, they prospect every day. You know, they practice every day. They, they do these things, right? We go through these lists all the time. So what I did here is I wrote down 10 additional things. Now, some of these kind of overlap to some of the stuff we talk about all the time, but these are a little bit different ways. These are a little bit different things than just your standard prospect three hours a day, 50 contacts, 30 contacts, whatever, the stuff we hear all the time. Now you still need to do those, but these are 10 additional things that if you want to produce at the highest level that you also need to implement in your day. So we're going to go through those today. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you haven't heard any of the previous ones where we talk about what the top <clears throat> agents do, just know one of them is that you have to prospect every day. So there you go. So, and then do that one and then do these 10. <laughs> and that's a good start. So as always, they're in no particular order of importance. They're not written in any particular fashion or anything along those lines. This is just how they're written on the paper. You decide what's important, what's not important, what's most important. Okay, so these are 10 additional things that top producers do consistently to stay great in their business. So the first one I wrote down here is they remain as positive as possible every day, which is hard because the world is not very positive. <clears throat> they remain as positive as possible every day, which is hard because the world is not very positive. <clears throat> I mean, think about it. Generally speaking, are the loudest people positive? No. The people who post the most on social media are the people that are that complain the most. Unless they're, I'm not talking about real estate people that are posting just listed, just sold. I'm talking about the people that just go on there and use up their 140 characters or whatever, whatever the, the limits are, you know, on Twitter and a variety of different things. The people that typically are the loudest are the most negative. So it's hard to stay positive on a daily basis if you get yourself sucked into that hole. You have to remain as positive as possible every day, <clears throat> which is why we talk about ignoring some of those other things. You should never, ever do any of that stuff in the morning because it's just, it's just toxic. It's toxic to watch the news in the morning. It's toxic to scroll through a bunch of feeds in the morning especially right now. Here's the thing. Now, here's what I want. This is some of you are not going to like this. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm well aware of that. And I'm not going to say what I'm going to say next in, in trying to annoy you or anything along those lines. Okay. But, but this is something that you have to grasp in remaining as positive as possible every day. You can't do a lot about most of the things going on in the world. So don't, get yourself sucked into the negativity of it. Now I get it, you know, I'll give you an example, right? There's all this, you know, presidential drama going on. It's, you know, oh, I hate this guy, I hate that guy, I hate this guy, I hate this guy. You can't really do anything about it, okay? You're one person, A, and B, you live in a state that your vote doesn't matter. Okay, that's just the fact. My vote counts, not in California. <laughs> okay, it doesn't. Okay, the Democrat's going to win. Okay, and I'm not. I'm not a. Pol I'm not a political person. I don't care. But but you get worked up over presidential stuff in a state that your vote doesn't matter and that you're not going to make a difference. Well, do you see what's going on across the world? Yeah, there's some sad stuff going on across the world. Can you really do anything about it? No. Okay, then why is it affecting your day? I'm not, and I'm not saying that again be, to try to be mean. 
I feel bad for the things, for the unfortunate people going on across the world. I really do. But you realistically can't do much about it. So you can either accept that and say, all I can do is manage the things that I can do and be positive and have a productive day. Or I can get sucked into this rabbit hole of a bunch of people on social media who all of a sudden are international affair experts and political experts and all these other different things and have a conversation with them, which will accomplish me nothing on a daily basis. I get it. I, again, I, again, I, I'm, I'm not necessarily sorry, but I, you know, if, if not trying to offend you, even though I'm sure some people took that as me being me, and that's, that's, but you, you have to remain as positive as possible every day. And it's hard because there's so much negativity in our own local business. We, it's hard to stay positive because most real estate agents by nature are not positive people because they don't produce anything. So they're going to be negative. Door knocking is so old school. Okay, great. Then don't go. I'll go. You stay here and do nothing all day. I'll go door knocking. And at the end of the day, we'll reconvene and we'll see who was more productive. Nobody calls anymore. Cold calling, not so old. Okay, great. You again, you sit here. Don't move. Good boy. You sit here. I'm going to go make phone calls over here. And at the end of the day, let's see who's more productive. So you have to remain as positive as possible every day. Okay. And it's something you have to work at. So, so try not to get involved with too much drama of other things going on in the world, especially because you can't really do much about any of that stuff. Don't get involved in this stuff, certainly in the morning, because it crushes your day and don't get involved with it. The last thing you do before you go to bed, because then you're just have that lingering over you the rest of the night and going into the morning. Don't do that to yourself. Okay. You have to remain as positive as possible every day which could mean you have to read, you have to do affirmations, you have to watch funny videos, you have to take mental breaks, you have to do these things multiple times a day, okay? So that's one of the very, very key things you have to do if you wanna produce at a very high level, you have to remain as positive as possible every single day. I wrote down here, number two, be more specific in what you want to do. Be more specific in what you want to do. So what I mean by be more specific in what you want to do, there's a lot of different ways you could carry that. So some examples of that would be, well, I'm going to, I'm going to prospect today. Okay, great. Be more specific. Well, I'm going to prospect from nine to 12. More specific. Are you going to call or are you going to door knock? Well, I'm going to door knock. Where are you going to door knock? I'm going to door knock in Fountain Valley. Okay, great. What script are you going to use? What house are you starting at? Well, I'm going to do just listed. Okay, great. What's the listing that you're going to use for a just listed? Are you going to preview while you're there? Do you know the market stats? Now, same thing. It's like, well, I'm going to make phone calls. Okay, great. Where are you calling from home? Or are you calling from the office? Well, I'm going to call from home. Okay, great. Who are you going to call? I'm going to call expires. Do you have the numbers? Are you calling expires all over the area? Calling expires around a radius? Be more specific in what you want to do every single day. Be more specific in the goals. I wrote down here, more is not a goal. Well, how many listings do you want to take? Well, I want to take more. Okay, that doesn't help me. Well, I want to take this month, my goal is to take one new listing. Okay, great. My goal is to take five listings this month. Whatever it is, be more specific in the goal. My goal is to get, you know, I want to get 30 contacts. Okay, great. I want to get this many leads. Be more specific in what you want to do every day. Okay, so take that for what it is, but you have to be specific. It's the same thing with setting up your, your long-term goals or your daily goals, your yearly goals. Well, what's your income goal for the, for the fourth quarter? Well, I want to make more than I made in the third quarter. Oh, help. Okay. Be more specific. I want to make this much money. I want to have this many deals in escrow. I want to have this many pennies. Because if you're not specific, the goal A either doesn't seem attainable, so you give up, or seems so attainable that you don't have to rush to get it today. So give you an example. 
My goal, let's just say, if you were to say, well, you know what? My goal, I had a great third quarter. I'm having a great third quarter. I'm going to finish up the third quarter strong. And my goal in the fourth quarter is to do more. Okay. So you closed 10 deals, say, in the third quarter, um, five deals in the third quarter. All right. Wow. Great. Well, then the fourth quarter, the first month goes by, the second month goes by, and you don't have five deals. All of a sudden, the more looks like, oh, it's unattainable. I'm not going to go for it because you're thinking more than five. So you stop. Or you say the goal is you're, you're not specific enough, and then you get there, and then you stop. Or you'll think, oh, I got plenty of time. I got plenty of time to get the five. It's not a big deal. I got plenty of time. I got three months. So you don't rush it. Be more specific in the goal. Okay. Be more specific in what you want to do every day. The third thing I wrote down here, role play, accountability, and participation. Role play, accountability, and participation. And then here's the key word after those. Daily. Role play, accountability, and participation daily. The key word I want you to underline under that, obviously, is the daily. But of the first three, role play, accountability, participation, is underline participation three, four, five times. Because if you want to produce at the highest level, the one thing you absolutely have to do is participate. You need to participate. Well, Robert, participate in what? Everything. You need to participate. You need to be out there. You need, you know, Reva just shared a story about how she put herself out there. She talked to her company about, hey, I'm looking for someone to do, I'm looking to do an open house. Who can get me an open house? That's participating. You need to participate. You need to get yourself out there. You need to participate in role play. You need to participate in prospecting. You need to participate in calling past clients, centers of influence. You need to participate. This is a participation business that doesn't hand out participation trophies, unfortunately. Okay, but you have to participate in order to win. I wrote down a quote here from Wayne Gretzky. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. For those of you that don't know who Wayne Gretzky is, he's the greatest hockey player ever. And it's not even particularly close. For those of you that don't know what hockey is, so it's a game, okay? They ride around on skates. There's a puck. I'm just kidding. Okay. You know, California, sometimes we don't know what hockey is. It doesn't snow. But you miss 100% of shots you don't take. That's participation. You miss all the listing appointments you don't go on. You miss all the contacts you don't make. You miss all the role play sessions you don't do. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You have to participate. In real estate, the one thing that always should put a smile on your face is that you are in a business when most people, and I'm talking like 80% of people, do not participate. They don't participate. So if all you do is participate, you are better than 80% of the other people in your field. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's not that way anywhere else. Well, I want to be a professional basketball player. Okay, great. All I need to do is participate. Well, you also need to do a couple other things like grow. <laughs> you know, grow, learn how to jump, learn how to shoot. Because you can't just participate in basketball. In real estate and insurance and mortgage and sales in general, just participate. Interesting stuff. All right, number four, I wrote down here, 80% produ production-based activities. We've talked about this a lot the last couple of weeks. 80% production-based activities, which means 80% of your day needs to be around production-based activities. But I wrote down here, this is the hardest thing people have to follow to produce at a high level, and it's because of the distractions. If you don't have any listings right now or any escrows, all you should be doing is searching for listings and escrows and working on your skills. That's really all you should be doing. You don't have any admin. So you don't have to worry about that. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, angry clients. 
You don't have to worry about going to meet an appraiser or an inspector or anything like that. So if you don't have any listings or escrows right now, all you should be doing is prospecting and working on your skills. See, we don't do that because of the distractions. But why do we, why are there distractions? And the answer is because prospecting sucks. That's why there's distractions. If I told you, hey, instead of prospecting, go lay out by the pool with a margarita, you wouldn't let anything distract you. Oh, no problem, Robert. It's great. <laughs> oh, man. Poolside margaritas and I can get leads that way? Yeah. I wouldn't let anybody distract me. But, real, but, the, but if I say, hey, get on the phone and call a bunch of people you don't know, then it's like, oh, God, somebody distract me. Please, anybody. That's just the truth. Prospecting sucks. So we let the distractions happen. You have to avoid the distractions. You have to make sure you're doing 80% production-based activities. If you're not doing 80% production-based activities, you won't do it tomorrow. Okay. That's the key thing on this because you'll exhaust yourself. You'll wear yourself out and you won't follow it. So gradually go up there. So if you were to do a whole breakdown of your schedule, only did a time motion study, which I recommend everybody do, and you find that 40% of your day is based on production-based activities. Okay, great. Next week, the goal is 50. And then it's 60. And then 70. Work your way up. If you go from 40% to say, all right, next week, 80% production-based. By Thursday, you're going to quit. Robert, this is nuts. I'm exhausted. Yeah, I know. Because you're working. Which is no fun. Okay? So work your way up to that. I do this all the time. It's the same type of thing, you know, when people talk about waking up early. I want to wake up early. How do you wake up so early? What time do you want to wake up? I want to wake up at five. Okay, great. What time do you wake up now? 6.30. Well, you're not going to start waking up at five next week. You'll be so exhausted. So next week, wake up at 6.15 every day. And then six, and then 5.45. Work your way up. All right, number five, I wrote down, you have to become an authority in the marketplace. You have to become an authority in the marketplace. And I wrote down here, you need to know market stats and trends to become an authority. You need to know market stats and trends to become an authority. Knowledge is power. Power gives you authority. So when I say you need to become an authority in your marketplace, you need to become respected in your marketplace. You need to be someone that turns to with real estate questions. You need to be someone that people can trust in the marketplace. That's an authority in the marketplace where people know the name, know the sign, know the brand, that if you call them, even if they're not interested, they, they respect what you're saying. They respect your opinion. You need to become an authority in the marketplace. You don't want your doctor to not be an authority. You don't want your pilot to not be an authority. You don't want your attorney to not be an authority. You know, you need to be an authority and you need to know your product. You need to know the market stats. You need to know different things. Imagine if the doctor didn't know the product. All right, doc, we need open heart surgery. What do you think? Do you have all the tools necessary to do this procedure? I, I have no idea. We're going to, but you know, hey. I grew up around the hospital, so, because that's what we do in real estate. Well, I grew up in the city, so therefore, I'm qualified to list your home. No, not really. The doctor doesn't say that. I don't know how to do open heart surgery, but I grew up right down the street. Okay, they don't do that. An attorney doesn't do that. Do you know, you know, do you know the law? No. You ever seen the movie My Cousin Vinny? It's a classic if you've never seen it. Cindy loves it. Okay. It's a classic movie, right? Joe Pesci, Marissa Tomei. But, you know, he's, this kid's on, he's, go, he's on trial for murder and he calls his cousin to come help him out because he's an attorney in the family. And he's, and he's asking him questions and he doesn't know, the attorney doesn't know. And you could just see the kid's face just freaking out like, oh my gosh. And he's like, well, you know, how many times did it take you to pass the bar? You know, first time, no. Second time? No. Third time? No. 
you know, and he's just freaking out every time. He's like, oh my God, I really want my cousin to help me on a murder charge. It took him six times to pass the bar. He's not a hundred percent sure what he's, when he's allowed to object, you know, now granted it works out in the movie, obviously it's a comedy. It's the way it goes, but in real life, that's not the way it would go. Right? You have to be an authority in the marketplace. I wrote down here next, always be working on your conversation and presentation skills. You always be working on your conversation and presentation skills. So the basics I put down there is asking questions, learning how to ask questions. It sounds funny. And I think a lot of people, you don't take that seriously. And that's probably one of the issues you have. When I say learn how to ask questions, you just kind of, eh. okay. So when the seller has an issue and you just blah all over them for 15 minutes and they don't sign the contract, maybe you should have asked some questions. I have a problem with your commission. Well, let me tell you about all this and this and this. Instead of saying, great, other than commission, do you have any other questions? Other than, you know, if we agree on the commission, would you sign the contract with me today? Have you reviewed my plan of action? Like you can learn how to ask questions. Well, what questions to ask? Well, figure that out. Do what you can, role play, write out the scripts, learn the scripts, but you have to learn how to ask questions better, okay? Listening, listening with the intent to understand, not listening with the intent to respond. That is a skill that you have to constantly work on because sometimes, and it's, it's human nature, it's not like a big deal, but it's something you have to learn is that we're really just listening for the person to finish so that we can give our opinion or get what we have to say. I'm just letting you talk. So you can, I can be fair. I really don't care. You have to listen with the intent of I'm understanding where you're coming from. And then not just listening with the intent to respond. Okay. That's a skill that you have to constantly work on what to say and how to say it. Obviously knowing the scripts up swings and down swings. Are you working on your upswings and down swings? Are you working on how to talk to different personality styles? Because learning how to talk to an amiable versus a driver is a skill that you have to learn. You could use the same words, but the tone has to be different. The length has to be different. Talking to an analytical versus an expressive. So you're always working on your conversation and presentation skills. And if you think that you don't need to work on your conversation and presentation skills, I would love for you to record and send me a listing presentation role play, and then maybe you don't. But I feel like you probably could always get a little bit better, okay? Always working on your conversation presentation skills. All right, I wrote down here next, never stop working their database. Never stop working their database. Your database is your gold mine. I, I mentioned this the other day, but there's the three lies when it comes to the database that we tell ourselves all the time as to why we don't work it. Well, they know I'm in real estate. Lie number one. How do I know that's lie number one? Well, here's a fun little game you can play. Get your phone out, look at your contacts, and then ask yourself, do I know what every single one of these people do for a living? And the answer is no. Even if you know somewhat the field, I think they do something with insurance. Are they a salesperson? Are they an adjuster? Are they a processor? Are they an underwriter? I don't know. But you are also in somebody else's phone that they can scroll through and go, I think they do something with real estate. I don't know. Or I don't know what they do. Or if you had a previous career before real estate, they might still think of you in that way. That's fine. That's okay. Because you do the same thing. So they know I'm in real estate. Lie number one. Okay. Or, oh, if they need something, they'll call me. Lie number two.
only 23% of people use the same agent more than once. 23. But yes, your database is obviously different. <laughs> They'll call you. But here's the thing. Here's the other part you're missing. Even if you're totally convinced that if they need to sell their house, they'll call you. By not calling them, by not working in your database, you're missing out on the people they know. Because they're not going to refer you anybody. They're just going to think of, oh, they helped me sell my house. I want to sell my house again. Call the guy or gal that helped us last time. But they're not thinking of you for referrals. So you're missing all the referral business. Okay. Or Number three is, well, all my business comes from my database, so I'm obviously doing a good job. That's lie number three. I can, trust me, years of recruiting, I can tell you this, just because all your business comes from your database doesn't mean you're getting as many deals as you should be getting. I've done this for recruiting for years. Okay, tell me about your business. Well, you know, I closed 10 deals last year. All of them were from my database. So, you know, I got a great handle on that. Oh, okay, great. How many people are in your database? About 400. Oh, wow, 400. And you closed 10. Well, that's great. What happened to the other 30? Well, what do you mean? Well, I mean, 400 people in your database, if they're a true 400, you should be getting, I don't know, 30 to 40 deals a year. You only got 10. What happened to the other 30 deals? Where'd they go? It happens. Never stop working your database. All right, three more points here. I wrote down think, walk, and talk with real high levels of energy and enthusiasm. Think, walk, and talk with real high levels of energy and enthusiasm. Think about it, okay? Think about it. You're walking down the street. You can tell just by so the way someone's walking, kind of what their mentality is, yes or no. So you're walking and someone's walking like this. Does that look like someone that you're just dying to work with? <laughs> I don't know what that person does for a living, but I'm, I'm in. And then you see someone just kind of walking straight up you're like, okay, I don't know what they got going on, but they seem energized, they're upright. Walk, talk with high levels of enthusiasm. Well, tell me how your day's going. Well, you know, I mean, it's okay. Oh, get me through this conversation. Okay, or how's your day going? It's going fantastic. Living a charmed life. That's what I always say. I live a charmed life. And people go, oh, okay. Didn't expect that answer. Well, what'd you expect me to say? It's hot. No oh, shit. It's Southern California. Come on. I'm aware. Can Boy, you make no. me laugh over here. <laughs> but it's, it's the truth. So walk, talk, real high levels of energy and enthusiasm. Talk with enthusiasm, be excited. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to be me. Because some of you think, well, energy and enthusiasm, I got to be Robert. That's a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Hey, you don't have to be me. But you need, some of you need to move it up a little bit. So perfect example. I went to go pick up some dinner yesterday. I'm dressed in my suit and everything like that. And the lady at the counter goes, oh, rough day at work. No, it was fine. A great day at work, actually. Really? Yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm getting dinner right now. I'm going to go home, live in Southern California, a beautiful wife. Life is good. And she was so thrown aback because she probably asked that to people all the time. And they go, oh, yeah, you know, the grind. <laughs> I'm in a suit, I'm not digging ditches. Walk, talk with real high levels of enthusiasm. I wrote down here, if you want to remove the stress from both you and the client, smile and be excited. If you want to remove the stress from both you and the client, smile and be excited. 
Real estate's a stressful transaction. No. Yes. Client stress, buyer stress, seller stressed. If you go in there, you know, just woof, then the, the tension, the stress is still there. But if I go in there with a smile on my face, Mr. Masso, I'm so excited about helping you get your home listed and getting it sold. Do you mind if I come in? Then it's like, oh, hey, look at him. He's got a smile. He's excited. I'll tell you, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hey, I wrote down three real important questions for you. Do you mind if I ask those of you right now? Yeah, sure. What's that? Well, number one, do you absolutely have to sell your home? As opposed to, I wrote down three real important questions. you mind if I ask those to you right now? Sure. Do you absolutely have to sell your home? Now the stress and tension is still there as opposed to the smile, the excitement. Do you have to sell your home? Do you want me to handle the sale for you? See, when you smile and be excited, it's easier to ask for the business as well. Do you want me to handle the sale for you? Would you sign the contract, please? Smile. Be excited. I wrote down here, if this is hard for you, I wrote down here, what excites you? Right before you get to the door, think about what excites you. So when they open the door, you're smiling. For everyone, it might be different. For some of you, it might just be getting the listing. Is this what excites you? Some of you, it might be the potential commission that comes from it that excites you. Some of you, it might just be the competition. I just want to beat whoever else they're in. The dollar. Guy does 400 deals a year in Michigan. And he'll tell you, at this point in my career, I don't even care about the money. I just want to beat the other person. Okay, go, Dave. What excites you? Okay, whatever that may be. Okay, number nine, I wrote down here. They're not afraid of confrontation, nor are they afraid to confront. They're not afraid of confrontation, nor are they afraid to confront. Here's the key. Confrontation is simply asking questions. We take confrontation as something personal, that it's an argument, that it's being mad, that it's being angry. It's simply just asking questions. A confrontation could be, why do you feel your home is worth $30,000 more than your neighbor's? That's simply confrontation, but it's not angry. I didn't say it mad. I didn't say it in disgust or frustration. It was simply asking questions. That's confrontation. So it's okay to be able to do that to a client. Handling objections is a confrontation. I want to list high. Robert, I think your price is way too low. That's ridiculous. We have to list it higher. I understand you want to list high to lean room for negotiating. Have you considered the problem that creates for you? That's just a confrontation. Without me getting mad or irritated, I'm just simply confronting you on the fact that you think you want to list the property higher. It's just simply asking questions. But you also have to be okay with being confronted because clients will do that to you. That's ridiculous. I'm not listing at that price. I'm not listing at that commission. How is that even a comp? You know, I'm not doing a price reduction. They're going to confront you. You have to accept it. I go, okay, they have a right to confront. This is emotional and it's all their money. The last thing I wrote down here, number 10, they're always involved with a mentor or coach. Always involved with a mentor or coach. Back and look at, and I'm not here to sell anything. So whoever that may be, okay? Whether it's coaching in our company, whether it's Mike Ferry coaching, whether it's, you know, Tom Ferry coaching, whether you're in a, a Tony Robbins type of mentor type coaching or anything along those lines. I'm not here to sell anything, okay? But they're involved with mentor or coaching. Highest producers. And the funny thing is that when you, there's a lot of them that left some, whatever their coaching was for an extended period of time. If you, if you talk to a lot of people that are on the panels and stuff at Mike Ferry retreats, maybe not a lot, but there's a number of them that left coaching at some point in their career and then realized that they need the coaching. They need the mentoring. They need that accountability. Karen Bernardi, 
left for a year at one point. And then realized, ah, uh, you know what? This isn't as much fun. I'll pay the money for the coaching. You know, we've had people in our own company do that. You know, that they, they tell us, yeah, you know what? I'm good on the coaching for right now. Okay, great. Some people, you know, it's fine. But then after a while, they'll say, you know what? I need the accountability again. Okay, we're here. Now, involved with mentoring and coaching, but I wrote down here, that means you have to accept the fact that you don't know everything. And even the highest of highest producers accept that fact that they don't know everything. And then I wrote down underneath that, you have to accept the fact that your coach or mentor is telling you whatever it is they're telling you because they care. That's one of the biggest reasons people leave mentoring and coaching is they get coached or the mentor tries to help them and the agent doesn't like it. And so they leave. You have to accept the fact that they're just looking out for your best interest. I said this about Jack Ma once when I interviewed Jack a few months back, I asked Jack his superpower and he said he was coachable. And I, I said that, and I, I had said, because I, I work with Jack every Friday, and I said, you know, Jack really, really believes that we have his best interest in mind. And someone had commented, well, what does that mean? I mean, wouldn't all people think the coach has the best interest in mind? You would think, but that's not the case. Some people think that we're just following an agenda. But you really just have your best interest in mind, Okay. Always involved with a mentor coach, mentor or coach. All right. So that's what I wrote down. So look, there's, we talk about all the time, you know, the, the things that top producers do, and it's typically always around prospecting, working your different sources, role-playing every day, a variety of different things. We always talk about that, but these were just some different thoughts that people who are producing at the highest level are still doing on a consistent basis that might be a little bit different from just the, the stuff that we always go over. So hopefully there was one or two things that were helpful. All right, cool. That's all I got. All right, everybody. Well, appreciate you being here. Appreciate you sticking around. We got a whole afternoon of prospecting still to go. And so we have here, let me see what I got. 